Hey everyone, welcome to my part two look at V2OS. In part one we looked at booting the system and getting it installed onto a floppy. Um, in this video I'm going to look at some of the apps, um, modules, servers, and tools that came with the system. If you'll remember in the base system there was very little that was possible. You could get a directory listing but there were no files there. So in this video I'm going to get some files into the system, some of the apps that existed at that time, and we will uh, look at that. Um, I had to dig up the old website um, uh, via the Wayback Machine. So I found around 2005, looks like March 2005, um, a copy of the site that actually had enough tools and apps, etc., that we could go take a look and, and play with some of them. Um, you can see in the apps list, they had a couple of things like text editors, um, looks like some games, some graphics demos, uh, shells of various types, um, a 3D app, etc., a calculator. So um, depending on how these were distributed, if they were .app files, the Wayback Machine saved them. If they were zip files, they weren't preserved. Um, most of the source code is, is not available. Some, some of them um, are, but most of them are, are not. So we just, I, I grabbed uh, all of the things that I, I could and um, we'll just go try some of them and, and see what they look like. Um, there's also some modules for things like CD-ROM access. Um, it looks like there's a, a PCX decoder. So that could be interesting. Make a graphic and um, some tools to actually get these files onto a v2fs formatted floppy because you can't just read fat which you know <laughs> if i'm honest might have been a good idea for them to make a, a fat reader um, module but anyway be that as it may uh let's go in and see if we can get some of these apps onto the system so the first thing um you got to do is um copy them into the, the DOS hard drive image. I've got a, that 40 meg hard drive. So you can see before we had these V2S files um, and the right OS that was used to make the original floppy. So to this hard drive, I'm gonna add those, uh, all the stuff that I managed to download. So let's see, we will Copy apps, uh, mods, and tools to the hard drive. And I just realized I don't have a directory there. That should do it. Let's have a look and see. Nope. I'll uh, just move those in here. So yeah, then we've got our apps, various .app files, which of course don't read well on the Mac, <laughs> and mods and tools. All right, cool. So that should be enough for us to actually get the uh, files onto the floppy. So I just ejected that disk. Now we can boot up into the... Uh, MS-DOS hard drive and I've got the uh, floppy mounted as well so we'll be able to copy from the DOS hard drive into the V2FS floppy so uh, let's see V2OS apps great so let's copy all of these Oops, and what do I not have here? Oh, it's V2, I can't type today. All right. Copy. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna have to video cut this. Okay, there we go. So 
all of those files are now copied into the floppy. And we'll do the same thing with the mods. So for And I just about did the same mistake. And these aren't apps. Okay, cool. So that copied all those files into the floppy. So now we could quit out of there and we'll boot up from the floppy drive. So before, when we did files, it was very boring. It didn't print anything. Now when we do files, yeah, cool. So we get a list of files. They're all type sys. I have no idea what that means. And you can see it tells you the start and sectors of each one of them. Uh, let's just run some of the mortar. See what we get. Uh, v2flames.app. Ooh, looks like some red flames. I'm not sure the way that it's displaying might just be because, yeah, because of QMU's full screen kind of oddity. So, all right, kind of a neat little graphics flames demo. Um, right, let's see what else do we got. Um, V2 dots to... Oh, cool. Okay, so now you can see what a crash looks like in this thing. <laughs> um, I, I don't know how to exactly interpret this, but this is uh, this is no bueno. If you see this, something seriously wrong has happened. So, is it recoverable? Well, no. Um, you can't really do anything. You you can go play around with stuff, but you can't really see what happens. So anyway, I'll just reboot. It's fine. Whoa. All right. Uh, chars shows the character set. Uh, it's, you know, obviously standard ASCII order. Um, looks like there's some line drawing characters beginning around, uh, looks like B7, V8, that kind of thing. Show PCX. We'll do that one a little bit later. I've, um, we need to actually get a, a PCX file onto the same floppy. So, and let's see, DOS. Welcome to V2 DOS. I thank you. Uh, DAR works as expected. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, literally everything you type will produce a directory listing. Um, so, it's. <laughs> Not exactly ready for prime time, including hitting the, the escape key. Um, oops, quit. Yeah, that doesn't work. Exit. No. So we'll reboot again and get it out of there. Um, what else do we got? Flam V2. By the way, these app names are case sensitive, which I <laughs> found out the hard way. That was annoying. Um, okay, cool. So, whoa. Hmm. That didn't really work out too well. Let's try that again in, uh, in not full screen. I think that might be more like a QMU thing than a, yeah, look at those sick flames. <laughs> um, you can hit escape to get out of there and yeah, it's a pretty nice effect, you know, not too bad. Uh, let's see if we can get into full screen, actually. Uh, once we start it like this. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right. I'm just going to reboot. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, CD-ROM, 
I did try this. I couldn't get it working immediately. Um, I suspect maybe I just couldn't get um, the right type of CD-ROM image, like whether it was the wrong ISO level or it had extensions that this thing didn't like or who knows. Um, there's dots. Oh, there's this full screen stuff again. Yeah, kind of a neat little matrix, I guess, of dots. This probably runs a lot faster on real harder, I'm guessing. This is probably just QMU being a bit pokey and my machine heating up. So. Oops. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, Morse. Let's see, there's edit. This, this is an editor. Um, I couldn't figure out how to like save files or anything like that. It just, or open files or close files, or even use the help. Yeah, this might not be ready for prime time. Um, V2Calc is a perfectly serviceable calculator. Uh, you get Q to get out of here. Um, Morse. Apparently that delightful sound, which I don't know if you heard, but it's V2OS in Morse code. Um, let's see. Annex. Annex shell by Animal. Okay, so I type W, which is the Unix command, and it just gave me a file list and then exited that program, brought me back to the, uh, the standard command prompt, if you want to call it that. Um, I go back in. It doesn't matter what you type, basically gives you a command list and then pukes you back out here. So not quite ready for prime time either. Um, for help about this, shall I type man. Okay, so there's ls, some variables, info, a version thing, info. So I don't know what you can man. No. Okay, cool. You can do CLS. Uh, let's see, log out. Okay, that returns you back to the main system prompt. That's not bad. Uh, V2ed. I think this is another editor. I don't know how you save anything or do anything really with this. Save, <laughs> ask me if I want to save and then just peep me back out to the system. So not super useful. Okay, that's all the apps I could manage to load except for uh, CD-ROM and show PCX. All right, so just a bit of a video cut there as I went to go do some digging. I couldn't get some of these uh, modules to work, but anyway, let's take a look at the modules and see uh, what's available and what we can get working. Um, I actually ended up also lower casing all of these files just to make it a little bit easier on me to type because the caps lock key doesn't work either. So. All right, so we've got a bunch of modules. Um, let's see, we can start with a CD-ROM. So we have a, this uh, ATAPI or ATAPI dot V2M. Let's go load mod. All right, it says module loaded. If we go control alt M, now we can see on the module screen, we actually get a little bit of info on that. So in this case, we have you know, the interface, a bit of info about it, since it's a QEMU DVD-ROM, which it is. And now we could use the um, CD-ROM.app. Um, 
there's also, now that we've done this, we should see um, a CDA device here with that AT API type. So if we do run cdrom.app, CDRM testing application, okay. So let's see, we could do disk info. Let's try that. So there's one track, yep, it's a data track, so that's fine. Um, a path table. Whoa, a lot of info in here. Basically, I just took the v2os um, directory on my system and just made an ISO out of it. So we could page up a little bit and just see what we got. It looks like it kind of dumped the raw path table. This is obviously a very, um, you know, a diagnostic app. It's not really meant for, for end use. Um, Okay, and I think if we hit enter here, yeah, um, it'll actually um, display as well the uh, root directory. So we've got these files on here and you can see that there's a dot ds underscore store because uh, I did this on my Mac and it's polluted that directory. So <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see, we could do an AT API reset. Uh, I'm not too keen. File info, again, just does like a kind of a DIR of those so i have no idea what x function does it just seems to display some information looks maybe at the beginning of the the drive uh so yeah that's uh that's basically about it i don't think you can get from this system an actual directory listing it doesn't show up in the part list uh so I, I don't think you can actually do any kind of like a DIR or a files, I should say on here for it. But anyway, it looks like there's some, you know, rudimentary, we could say support for CD-ROMs. Okay, so beyond CD-ROMs, there's this IDE one. Um, now, if we look at disk list right now, we can see that HDA is actually being accessed via BIOS calls. If we load the IDE module, and then we do disk list again. Now it says IDE. And you know, if we look at the module screen, um, you can see here it detects the geometry of the uh, drive and you know, a bit of info about it. So, so that's interesting. It doesn't really help us. We don't have a V2FS partition on the hard drive, so this doesn't really work. Um, and finally, we have three V2M files that have to do with graphics. So there's PCX, Pixel, um, SVGA, VESA, um, sorry, four, um, or four weapons are, never mind, um, four Mac VESA dot V2M. So these are, are, are for graphics. And I loaded also a demo dot PCX file to try the uh, show PCX app. Unfortunately, I could not get this working, but I'll, I'll show you what happens. Um, I don't think the order that you load these in matters, um, but And if you look at the module screen, we can see the results of the loading of those. So there's some info on the VESA. It says it's a VESA 2.0 um, compatible video cards. And you can see some info on the, um, the VBE version of uh, QMU here. And there's a pixel server and the uh, PCX loader. So, so that's all done. Let's go back to the uh, terminal here. We'll do run show PCX. And it says, uh, please insert a floppy, which I do. And I get this blank screen and it doesn't really matter whether I'm, you know, full screen or not. I get a, basically a blank screen does not work. Um, if we load macvesa.v2m, which it says um, that's for virtual PC, and I thought this was interesting to try just because I am running this on a virtualized system. Oops, that's actually load mod v2m. 
Um, and it it loads just fine. And, and I don't know exactly what adjustments. I don't have the source for this, so I can't really see exactly what they changed. But oops. So this one um, will actually give me usually a little bit of a, yeah, a kind of a junky screen. So, so you can see that it actually loaded the PCX file, thought it was okay enough to try displaying it, attempted to display it, and then this is what we got. So it's, you know, I, I, I couldn't really get this to work. I did try a couple of different things. Um, Yo, PCX here. <laughs> I did try a couple of other things like using the um, Cirrus Logic VGA driver in QMU. That didn't help either. Um, I, I also tried it in Box. Uh, let's see. I think this is enough to just do. Oops. So again, we can do, whoops. Um, this is kind of neat because you can actually see the uh, floppy drive being accessed. Um, and if we go back to the module screen, you can see, again, it's got a basis server, you can see the info that's available, you know, in the system. Um, looks like it should all work, but uh, when we actually go to do it, uh, oops. Okay, now it won't let me back into the terminal screen. That's great. All right, whoops, we'll try that again. Apparently you could do a, oops, a uh, startup script um, called boot.scr and put commands in and it will execute them at boot. So I might try that just so I can avoid having to keep typing all this stuff. But right, so you can see it accessing the floppy and you know, eventually you get basically the same screen as I saw in QMU. So I think that'll just about wrap it up for me and V2OS. Just one parting shot before I go. Looks like there was an article on this operating system posted in December 1999 by the venerable Commander Taco. Uh, you may want to have a look at this still has that new car smell operating system. <laughs> it's kind of funny to see this uh, post from well, like 20 some years ago next to the more recent current news but anyway the, the comments on this article are uh, are quite hilarious and definitely worth a, a look just to see what people's opinions were about somebody releasing a dos like operating system at the time um it was contentious then obviously 20 years later developments kind of stopped so you know people maybe don't remember it now but um, anyhow, maybe check that out. I'll put a link to this in the uh, description as well. So, all right. Thanks. Cheers.